welcome. I just wanted to start out our course talking about and putting together an inspiration board. I think that one of the most important things for an artist to have a prolific creative practice is staying inspired. And it's one of the keys for me for getting into a creative flow, right? And that's sort of what we all want in our art practices is to just be able to step into the flow of creativity. But I also think that there is something to be said about getting really focused in your inspiration, right? And being able to innovate your process in the midst of that. And I, I really think that for me as an artist, it's what sort of sets me apart in that I, I really, in my brain, even though it's really difficult to communicate what, what sort of the theme or the focus or the feeling emotion of a, of a collection is, I think that that is one of my strengths as an artist and really what has allowed me to find my creative style as an artist as well. And so I just want to walk you through some of the things that I do to gather inspiration and to become focused in my collections, right? So even though I am not one who actually puts together physical inspiration words, I'm always putting together uh, digital and inspiration words online. And oftentimes I like to get really, really focused in the materials that I'm using in the subject matter that I'm exploring and really just in the general overall feeling of a collection of pieces. And, you know, I think that this is probably one of the most important things that you can do for, for yourself, right? And just recently I was able to teach a workshop at Jean Oliver's in Castle Rock. And one of the things that I was inspired by just from being in her space, if you've ever been in her space, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the things that I was inspired by was she had an actual physical inspiration board that was up on this like really cool, I don't know, it was like an old vintage board and whatnot. And so when I came back to my home, I was looking around my house and I was like, what do I have that I could use right now, right? And so I actually have this, I don't even know if it's like, it's some kind of old vintage board that I got thrifting, right? And it wasn't like this originally, but I ended up painting chalkboard paint in the inside of it. I also have a big vintage door that has chalkboard paint all over it. And I let my girls kind of draw on it for all the different holidays and celebrations. So that is also something that I could have chosen to use as something physical to create a an inspiration board, right? And so it's chalkboard paint and then it's actually just a, a sketch that I did of a flower on the chalkboard there. And so I can erase it at any times at or at any time I can erase it 
and you know do something new and I often use this for like putting like a menu on it for you know when I have like Christmas or stuff like that and so that is really what I purposed this piece for but I stole it from the other room and now I am going to build my inspiration board on it and I'm really excited about having something physical in my studio to inform my work and to lead myself down this path of inspiration. So I'm really excited and I am going to just share some of the things that I have chosen to include on my inspiration board, give you some ideas of how you can find those things for yourself as well. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, narrowing down your collections and what you're wanting to accomplish in your work. And so I think it's really important to have almost like a, an overall theme. And for me, my the theme in my work, you know, changes a lot over time, but there's also kind of this common thread that runs through all of it. And I feel like it's something that I'm exploring on a regular basis. And so for me, you know, a lot of it has to do with being able to find some kind of beauty in the mess, you know, and for me, that started really early in my creative practice as I was dealing with a lot of depression and just hard things that I was having to walk through after my very first car accident. So as most of you know, I just recently lost my mom this summer to pancreatic cancer. And so I feel like, especially in the times that we are living in, you know, I, I feel like this, this sense of grief, you know, and so for me, I feel like there's just a lot of raw vulnerability in my life and in my heart. And so it's almost like I just feel drawn to, I don't know, like some sort of rawness, but also messiness. And for whatever reason, I'm feeling drawn to using more textile type of art, which, you know, as you know, the poetry of stitches is, you know, all about exploring embroidery, right? Well, I, I really tried to find some different images and some different items around my house and in my stashes, right? that really kind of spoke to that feeling of being vulnerable and raw and just uh, grieving my mom. And there's another layer, I think, uh, in this theme, and that's the fact that my mom was a seamstress and she was like an amazing seamstress and she was an artist. And so I feel like in a lot of ways that theme is also being expressed in this collection of work. So I am just going to talk through some of the items that I've chosen and how and where you can find these things. You don't have to make an actual physical inspiration board like I am doing for this class. I also have what are like my digital my digital inspiration boards and so another place you can do this is like pinterest and oftentimes i will you know look on there and find you know embroidery art that i add to my embroidery 
board on Pinterest. I also very often will take screenshots on my phone when I'm like looking through images and you know, I'm kind of going for a feeling that I'm being drawn to. And so another thing that I will do is I will create folders in my photos that are very specific. So if I'm, you know, making like a botanical illustration collection, like I did with my last course, then I'm going to pop all the photos that are inspiration and the photos of artwork that I've created in the past. I'm going to put it in that folder. And then when I'm sitting down to actually make a piece of artwork, I actually get on my phone and I'm like, okay, let's look at the inspiration again. And then oftentimes that's enough to just get me into action, right? And I just want to say one more thing about inspiration before I start building my board here. I just want to mention that I think that you have to be extremely careful in not overwhelming your brain, right? You want just the right amount of inspiration. We live in you know, an information digital overload society right now. And I think that it's really easy to get inspired by everything and therefore become frozen and just stuck, right? And that's what we don't want. We want to be in flow and in movement and creative action. We want to make, be making artwork. We don't want to be stuck like, I don't know where to start. You know, there's so many inspiring images. And that's why I also think it's, it's good to just really get specific in your theme and in the materials and supplies that you're going to use in whatever emotion you're wanting to explore in your collections. And so I encourage you, don't get overloaded with too much inspiration. Just do enough to get you started and into action. And hopefully that makes sense. So first up, I am really feeling drawn to just simple line drawing with thread. And what's really cool is that you can, you know, you can use embroidery as a form of line. And I think that's really kind of cool. And one of the themes that we're exploring in this course. So I have this, this is just a sheet of canvas paper that I have embroidered a flower on. And so that is the starting, one of the starting points for this collection. So what else? I, I really feel like, you know, I like to look in my art journals for inspiration as well. And I actually have uh, just ripped pages out of my art journal for this inspiration board, you know, if you don't want to do that and you just want to be inspired by something in your journal and you don't want to rip out the pages, you can just take a photo and get the photos printed. And there you go. There's your inspiration. This, this paper is actually a journal page that I've ripped out and all it is is a piece of like watercolor paper and then collaged like vintage wallpaper and tissue paper. So I'm going to add that as well. My board is not like completely secure here. And so I keep like uh, moving it everywhere, which is kind of annoying. 
And you know, this I think really speaks to my inspiration for this collection. And again, another art journal page, and it's just kind of an inky mess that has really delicate, beautiful botanical lines in it. And it's, it has lots of different layers, watercolory layers. And I don't know, this I feel like communicates just the feeling of what is going inside, going on in here and in here, you know? I want something that is messy and raw and, you know, just, I don't know. it. At, but at the same time, there's like all these details and like form and lines starting to happen, which I think is somewhat like along this, this theme of like creating order in the chaos. So I'm going to add that. Oh, and the tape that I'm using is just, I don't know, like blue artist tape that I ordered online. Another one of my favorite things to add are just like uh, paint swatches. So oftentimes I will go to Oftentimes I'll go to say like the home improvement store and pick up a whole bunch at one time. And I have, I have them like everywhere in all of my paper stashes, but I really like that as kind of a, this is the colors that I'm being drawn to for this collection. And, you know, it's really funny because a lot of the colors that I'm choosing are more earthy, sort of neutral type colors. And there are a few pieces in this collection that I'm just kind of throwing all the colors in. <laughs> I'm going a little bit bolder and crazier, but Originally, when I started this collection, I really just wanted like more neutral, sort of grounding, earthy tones. Now, you know, I am a color nut and I often, I can't stay in the neutrals very well, but sometimes I do try to go more neutral, just so you know. And here is a really cool just photo that I had printed from Walgreens. You know, it's a pho photograph of a peony and it's a photo that I had taken. So I'm going to add that. My tape is losing its stickiness on some of these things. So I also have, this is, I had ordered a frame, a vintage frame, and it's like this really faint, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a, a pot and it has a daisy in it, and it most of the image was gone and it was just like this on the piece of cardboard. And it's like my favorite type of all of the vintage avocado green colors. So I really like this and I'm gonna add that as well in just a second. Gonna put some rolled tape underneath to make sure it sticks down all the way. 
And here I have another color swatch type element. Let's see, where do I want to put it? I can't remember. See, I, I had to stop midway and uh, take everything down just so I could show you guys. And now I can't remember where everything was. but it doesn't really matter. Um, I might put this up here. And no, I, I think maybe, I don't know. This is just a piece of painted canvas that I had sort of sitting around. Maybe I'll put these right here. It doesn't really matter. Um, And then I am really loving this. It feels like super chartreuse, yellow, greenish color. And I'm really loving like the pattern in it, but then also I'm loving this sort of color combination between the yellow and the, the peach. And I could even take it brighter and I do in some of these pieces. So again, you know, not for me, this is a lot like more subdued for me. And this was just this uh, beautiful woman here. She was, she was in vogue. So it's like, I love the, the vintage feel of it because it feels very like period and the couch has like yellow and white pattern and it just feels kind of moody and there's a real like feeling to this piece right you know or this photo it's like um kind of just contemplative you know whatever and so i encourage you to really try to find images that have a feeling to them. And so this I felt was just like appropriate, it has some yellow uh, flowers and then like a peach dress. And again, that is from an advertisement in a magazine. Could have been the same exact magazine. You know, I don't even know what was around the sides. I think I tried to cut out like part of the ad and yeah, so I feel like this photo also has sort of a feeling to it. And there's, you know, some botanical flowers in through it. And so I, feel, I felt like it added to this, this feeling, right? And then, I also have this little itty bit of yellow, again, very kind of unusual for me because I have to be in the right kind of mood to paint yellow or include yellow, right? And, you know, I don't think that this is completely finished, but that's okay because I can like add different elements later you know, if I'm feeling inspired by something else. But then also I just really quickly because I, you know, wanted kind of like a botanical type of sketch on, and this is a piece of vintage paper that I had. And so what's kind of cool is that I can also add elements around the edges, you know? And I like having some, just some of the lines from the flower kind of showing through in places as well. So yeah, like when I was focused on creating this inspiration board for this collection, I was really focused on sort of a feeling 
and really wanting to dive into a lot of the things that you see on here. So hopefully you are inspired. Maybe you have something that you can build your own inspiration board with. You can just do it straight on the wall if you want, right? That is another option for, you know, building your inspiration board. My problem is when I try to stick, you know, my photographs and inspiration on the wall, it like never sticks to the wall. So I like this because it's not going anywhere and it's, you know, it, I can easily change things out if I want to. So that's just a little sneak peek at how I gather inspiration for a collection, how I get focused and how I decide on just an overall theme for my work. And hopefully you're inspired to start doing this for yourself and for your collections.